All right, let's go ahead and begin our Naval News segment for today. We're going to begin by visiting uh, General Dynamics. General Dynamics Mission System opens the new underwater unmanned vehicle manufacturing and assembly center of excellence. I love how they add to that little PR term there. This is a ribbon cutting ceremony from uh, Friday in Taunton, Massachusetts. A ceremony today at the General Dynamics Mission Systems Taunton facility. Uh, company officials as well as representatives from the U.S. Navy officially opened the General Dynamics Mission Systems Unmanned Undersea Vehicle Manufacturing and Assembly Center of Excellence. The uh, repurpose of the manufacturing space of the General Dynamics Mission Systems Tauntaun facility will provide manufacturing assembly, integration, and testing of the knife fish and bluefin robotic UUVs. And here you can see knife fish and unmanned Let's go ahead and click these links. A little dangerous to do live. Okay, cool. So um, what these do, and uh, oh, I'm glad they incorporated the LCS into this. So one of the missions of the LCS that is actually functional for the US Navy, I give the LCS, you know, the littoral combat ship program, a lot of grief here. So here's one thing that they do well, and that is mine hunting. And they use, um, because they don't have any mine hunting sonar on board the LCS, they have to use these little unmanned vehicles that do have mine hunting sonar and then transmit the sonar data to these cargo carrying containers that they can crane on and off the LCS. So any LCS with enough room on the back uh, can have one of these and become a mine hunter in a matter of hours. That configurability, that flexibility is one of the prime selling points of the LCS is it can change its mission rapidly you know, in the field in contested areas, this ship can go from supporting special forces to becoming a mine hunter in literally a port visit, completely changing the mission of the LCS. So here's the knife fish unmanned undersea vehicle that they're gonna be uh, testing and continuing to develop. This program has been in process for years at this uh, facility that they're opening up. This is uh, like a half million square foot facility. It's huge. Uh, where they're, they're going to be assembling these and uh, making them better. Uh, the Bluefin Robotics is the other one. Let's see if they have a good web page for that that's safe to look at. It looks like it is. All right, so there's the Bluefin. And here you can see it's doing some testing there. Uh, the Bluefin 12 is a lightweight, medium-class, unmanned underwater vehicle, UUV, designed to deliver mission-critical data and complete operators' high-consequence challenging missions. In other words, this goes out ahead of the fleet and looks for mines. And if it messes up and hits a mine, only it gets blown up and not the ship. That's the kind of the purpose here. And here you can see they have an, a whole you know, suite of these Bluefin 21, 12, 9. Uh, this one's really, to give you an idea, whenever I joined the Navy in the 1990s, there was a program at the time, very secret, where we were testing unmanned underwater vehicles from 688 class submarines, shooting them through the torpedo tube. Not actually shooting them like a torpedo, but letting them swim out on their own. And they look like this. You know, we had these in the torpedo room, but they didn't look like torpedoes. They look like this guy right here. And they would be tethered, right? Well, over 40 years, that program has turned into this. And I'm sure a hundred other programs as well. But this gives you an, an idea of, uh, of the evolution of, of these things. These are pretty high technology uh, systems. And I do like how, that, can I zoom? I can't zoom in on this, but... So like these little portable computer centers, this is like the power supply, the hard drive, the whole setup is right here inside this cabin and they could just crane it on and off these ships. Really, really cool stuff. And uh, here is the actual place in case uh, you're wondering where it's at. It's in Massachusetts. I'm gonna zoom in on it. You can see how big this facility is. It's right here. It's over a half million square feet, this building. And they're going to be building it here in this, this assembly building. And if you look closely, you can see there's a motor pool here with a bunch of Humvee vehicles and heavy trucks that the uh, military uses. This is in a controlled, fenced-in area. And these are a bunch of, uh, you can see trucks right here, you know, flatbed trucks that the military would use with what appear to be um, some kind of trailer with maybe a generator on them. Yeah, down here. If you're in uh, OSINT, uh, you, you look at a lot of satellite photos. They're not normally labeled like this. This is from Google uh, Maps, uh, but 
yeah, we do this in the OSINT community a lot. So I guess they're going to be building these here, which, you know, maybe, you know, it's in small town America in the middle of Massachusetts, kind of halfway between Providence and Boston, building these mine hunting drones. Pretty, pretty crazy. All right, let's see before we go on to the next story, what you guys think about this. Uh, Les says, please educate me on your analytics. When you have a viewer who's been a long time subscriber and they leave, do you know how long the subscriber subscriber has left? Sure. Yeah, yeah, all, all those are on the analytics, absolutely. Yeah, I use Google Analytics and YouTube Analytics to uh, track that stuff. Those are my two sources. Uh, GB user says, would that help having a drone in the mine if the mine was a nuke? Yeah, I mean, you wanna be as far away from that blast as possible, right? If it's a nuclear mine. Does the Navy have an equivalent of Area 51? Yes, we do. And it's, it's public, it's not secret, uh, but I'm not gonna give it away. You guys gotta find it. We certainly do. Now we use Area 51, that Nevada training area for Navy flights, but there is another one that again is public and not many people know about. Yeah, I guess if it's public, it's really not secret, but it's got a low profile and I'm gonna keep it that way. Yeah. Uh, Vanguard says, I, I lie maybe 20 minutes from the building. You live 20 minutes from the building and it's huge. It was a huge job boost in your area. Well, this is some good news. I'm glad they're hiring. I mean, of course they are, right? I mean, and look at this industrial complex. There's a lot of stuff going on here. You know, who knows what all these other buildings do, but it is a big building. And um, yeah, man, that's awesome that we're kind of reinvesting. I, I give the military industrial complex a black eye every time I can because it's fun uh, for spending and wasting too much money. But a lot of that money, if you guys think about it, goes right back into the United States economy, giving people jobs and a purpose in life and some self-confidence as well as a paycheck. So a lot of good comes from it, even though there's a small minority people at the top that get dirty rich off this money. But a lot of the money goes to workers and creating jobs. So there's a there, there, there's two sides to, to that coin. And I should, to be fair, mention that more often. It's not all doom and gloom when it comes to spending money. All right. All right, cool. Let's uh, go on to the next one. This is a really short story that we're just going to go over here. Again, General Dynamics, one of our major military contractors, they have finished... Um, well, let's just read from the piece here. It says, General Dynamics Mission System Combat Search and Rescue System uh, is cleared for F-35 aircraft use. So F-35 planes can now direct SAR missions to rescue downed individuals, whether they're pilots, air crew, or anybody that has this little handheld device. This device can lock in on you know, a downed pilot. And I believe if the pilot himself has this device, device on the ground, it acts as a beacon. But let's read from the piece before I give it all away here. Scottsdale, Arizona. So we're moving out of New England over to Scottsdale, Arizona. General Dynamics Mission Systems Quick Draw 2 handheld GPS interrogator has complete electromagnetic completed electromagnetic ability testing and has been flight certified for the U.S. Navy use on board F-35 Lightning. Quick Draw 2 handheld and a GPS interrogator is part of General Dynamics Hook Combat Search and Rescue System. We'll take a look at that. And it's designed to quickly locate and rescue downed pilots and isolated military personnel. Yeah, because you could get separated from your unit. We saw this happen in Afghanistan just a little bit. You know, guys in the heat of combat when there's chaos, they find themselves by themselves and that's a terrifying feeling. Having this little quick draw too, you can not only find somebody else, you can ping your position encrypted to friendly forces only and they can come and get your ass. It's a two-way thing. So the quick draw two can quickly attach via a single cable to an existing intercom system in the F-35 without modifying the aircraft's electronics. It's literally plug and play into the F-35. And that's a big selling point. You don't wanna to have to reconfigure the cockpit to add this thing to it. Transforming it instantly into a combat search and rescue aircraft. So it's used by over 65 different Types of fixed wing and rotary aircraft, including the A-10 Thunderbolt II, the F-16, and the F-A-18 Hornet. The Quick Draw 2 transmits a message to the Hook 2 and Hook 3 combat survival systems. Oh, that's really cool. Let's take a look at what this Hook system is. I've not seen this yet, so we're going into this blind. 
So this is what the guy has in his hand. Okay, so this would be your survival radio that you keep in your uh, flight suit, I guess, is this little hook system. Very cool. So the Hook 3 Combat Survival Radio. So you can communicate, you can check your emails, you know, you can send text and be like, oh yeah, by the way, come get my ass. You know that, you can send that to the Quick Draw 2 Interrogator. Very cool. Look how big the screen is. It gives you your Latin long. It gives you the weather. You can watch Twitch on this. Freaking awesome. All right, let's see what you guys think about the Hook 3 Retrieval System. It says uh, Vanguard says a lot of government spending, total cost involved, even buildings they don't need are used, but got to be maintained, eat up a lot of cash. That's true. Yeah, there's a lot of waste in uh, or inefficiencies, I should say, in the uh, in the system. I can't argue that at all. But can it play Doom, right? <laughs> or does it play? Uh, what is that other one? Crisis. We used to say, can it play Crisis? Yeah. Okay, Les White says any private or commercial yacht can purchase a similar unit. This is nothing if not even worth announcing. It's a plug and play because every commercial system in the world uses it. Civilians call it uh, ERP. Or e EPERB? EPERB? Am I saying EPERB right? <laughs> it's spelled EPERB. Okay. Does it have a snake like old Nokia phones? Oh, yeah. Does it have in? It probably has a game. It's got to, you got to do something while you wait for rescue. Might as well play Snake. Sykes says it's a really good idea. Anything that saves lives is a good idea. Yeah, pretty much. Now, I mean, survival radios have been around for ages, but this is today's version of it. So I thought you might find this interesting to see what we use in the United States Navy. This is probably in other services as well. They may not call it Hook 3, but I'm sure this system is global, like uh, the gentleman said in chat. All righty.